Welcome to another episode of Meredith with the Y. I am your host, Meredith Willett, and today we have the beautiful and smart and talented Jennifer Steinhagen, and I'm so excited to share her with all of you and her very famous and amazing Instagram account, Book in a Chai, so stay with us. Hello, everyone. This is Meredith with a Y, and I am your host, Meredith Willett. Today, we are going to go deep, changing lives, and I am giving you the keys to the castle. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a banger right there. I like that music. <laughs> I know, right? I picked that out myself. And every I like time it. I hear it, I get dumbly excited. <laughs> That's stupid. So thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you. You were just on the cover of our magazine here. And that was exciting to see. You are blowing up in every respect. And I'm excited to talk to all the ladies and men and everything about where you where you've been and where you're going. Yeah, it's been kind of crazy. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so we kind of like talked before hitting go live. And, you know, I just want to kind of bring everyone up to speed who doesn't know you. Um, like, what is Book and a Chai? How do we get here? And like, what's it all about? So Book and a Chai is a book review site. Um, that's how it started. And it has morphed into truly curating a reader's lifestyle. It went from, these are the books I like, here's what you should know, to this is the favorite throw that I use. And these are the glasses that I love. And the reader lifestyle just encompasses comfy, cozy. And I thought, let's just do more than the, just the books because yeah. we're doing more than just books. We're, we're, we have lives. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> let's, let's figure out great places to read. Let's go to cool bookstores in cities that I visit. Let's do as much as possible with this platform. And that's where it's kind of developed into. I love that because there is a vibe, right? And that word is so often used right now because it is true. And so a vibe is basically another word for frequency. Mm -hmm. And so there is a frequency that is the reader. It's yep. someone that does love, you know, either the tactile of a book and a bookstore and being surrounded mm -hmm. by books. And what does that energy mm -hmm. look like? Is it a throw? Is it a corner? Is it a, you know, a part a, a place in your house with a certain reading light? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I love so much about what you're doing is you're like, hey, this is what I have found mm -hmm. either super expensive or super like medium or very much on the cheap. Yeah. I love this. And if I love this and you like this book that I'm reading every single month, maybe you'll also like this. And this is where I found it. So go check it out. I yeah. think that's brilliant. I did this entire series and I had so much fun, but it was find the perfect book reading chair. And I was going to like regular furniture stores like Macy's. And then I like going to consignment. So I did like divine consign. And I was looking at the place in Hinsdale and I would go to the store and I would sit in them <laughs> and I would like test it out. And I'd bring my daughter with me and she'd take pictures. And I started posting this this on my stories and I could not believe how into it people were. I mean, yeah. just, you should totally do this. And have you looked there? And I mean, I think you really need to think about like getting an Ottoman and just, I, it, it followed a journey, right? It told a story. It followed a journey. I, at one point I was going to get a, a chair and I think everybody really came with me with, finding the chair. And I thought, oh, this could be fun. We could do this for all kinds of things then. Um, mm -hmm. Because readers really love where they read. And we have little nooks and there might be several places or it might be one specific place. And we sort of want to make it perfect. And it's, yeah. fun. it's fun to do that. And it's fun to talk about it. And it's pretty harmless. And I had a great time doing it. So that was a a moment where I was like, oh, I'm going to do more like this. This was, this was a good time, you know, and letting people vote and letting people 
talk about it. And then I found the most ridiculous pictures on Pinterest where it was like reading Nook and be the most uncomfortable thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Like you've life. never read a book in your life. You've Don't never, even talk to me. Or it'd be like this lady sitting there lounging back and she's wearing high heels. And it's like, you're not reading in high heels. No one's reading in <laughs> high heels, you know? And so kind of poking fun at what some people think it looks like to read has was a lot of fun too. And that's more yeah. me, you know? Yeah, I love that. And you know what's so cool is when you're talking about this, is what I want people to hear, even if they're not into books, even if that's not their thing. I want you to hear what she's saying is that when you talk about something that's important to you and you speak from the heart and you speak from your soul, people out there will resonate with that. When you're true to yourself, you know, like you said, I could spot from a mile away a Pinterest board that this person has never read a book in their life yeah. and that like those yeah. are not their people. That's yeah. not their their yeah. MO is to be talking on this. Go find yeah. your uh, go find your high heel people and talk to them about high heels. Yeah. And that's OK, too. It's not a less than situation. Right. But at the same time, like I love the fact that you really found. Hmm. You mm -hmm. found your voice yeah. with books in a very like specialized way that people are resonating with that to the to the num to the tune of going from how many followers to how many followers in literal months. Cause I mean, we yeah. sat down and chatted. Yeah. God, it was not that long ago. No. But it was so helpful to talk to you. Holy cow, you just opened my eyes so much to what and 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 not as much like you didn't tell me what to do, which is what I love about you. You made me think about what I wanted to do mm. and put that into practice. And I hadn't really got I hadn't let myself get that far, right? I hadn't let myself think it would be it it could be something. Right. And as soon as I allowed myself to think about that it did. And it was just crazy. It was a couple of reels that connected and Instagram took and pushed out there. And I think people found me and luckily yeah. they stayed because they liked what I was doing and they have the same kind of lives or they wanted to read more or they wanted to chill more or they thought I was funny or they thought I was silly or whatever it was, they stayed. And that happened in a small period of time. And then I had to collect and go, oh, okay, well, what do I, now what am I going to do? Right? What Now I felt like I have these people and I'm sure you feel this way too. I have these people, <laughs> like I, I, I need to, I need to read still and I need to come up with new ideas and, but also not just for them, but also for me. Like I want to do things yeah. that I like and that I enjoy. So I started doing like the puzzle stuff and I got this dumb puzzle table that I'm so obsessed with. And I talk about it all the time and I get so many comments and messages about people in their puzzle tables. And I love it. I think like deep down, maybe I'm a 69, 70 year old lady, just, you know, at home with my puzzles and my cats and my books. And that's just who I am. And I'm fine with it. <laughs> Or maybe we accept, or maybe 69 and 70 year olds finally start talking about their puzzle tables yeah. and hide that part of themselves when they're in their fifties. Yeah. And like, yeah. they seem like they just don't have any friends and they've really had yeah. friends this whole time. They just happen to be books and puzzle tables. Yeah. No, you know I have a mean? friend who comes over and we do puzzles together and we laugh right? the whole time that we're sitting there chit chatting away and working on a puzzle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think that that's like such an important part of the conversation because I started to realize that when I make material that I would want to hear or that I would be interested or that I need to hear, right? And I think that that's so important is that, you know, going from, I don't want to you you know speak for you, but going from maybe thinking that you had to produce certain types of stay inside of a box or in parameters or in parentheses mm -hmm. because you were seen as quote this person. Mm -hmm. And then you and I sat down and you were like, I said, dude, like you're you like bring all of you to the table, 
all the parts. And like, then people are going to see this amazing, authentic, and you're going to have more fun with it. And it's going to be more real. And it's going to be more balls to the wall. Like, yeah. stop listening. Stop, stop thinking you're listening to your people because yeah. your people aren't even here yet. Yeah. And so when you're true to yourself, anyone out there that's listening, like she's literally the poster child of <laughs> saying I'm going to be unapologetically me. Mm -hmm. And then look what happened. I mean, you blew up tens of thousands of people resonating with your message in a very short amount of time. And I need everyone out there to understand how impossible it is to get followers on Instagram. Yeah. It's not hard. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. It is so damn difficult to even get one follower. Mm -hmm. How many did you get? Like 50,000? I mean, it went from, I would say it went from like four to 50 in a few days. And it, I distinctly remember <laughs> it. I was at a White Sox game. Even. I was at a White Sox game and I was sitting there and I was staring at the numbers going, mm -hmm. this is going to stop. And then because I'm me, I'm thinking, and then they're all going to unfollow me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this guy. This is what imposter syndrome sounds um, and looks like. Yeah. This will all go tomorrow. <laughs> I should really screenshot it now. <laughs> right. Right. And I funny? just kept watching it and it couldn't even keep up. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it couldn't show me what was happening. Right. And it was crazy. And I try not to read too much into that other than I found I found something that connected, but it connected with me too. Yeah. And it was it was wild. And then, you know, Instagram, once you get something, it's easier to kind of keep it going. Yeah. You know, you have all these followers now, they reshare you. And I'll have a lot of people who I like in the comments, it'll be like, you know, at Peggy Johnson, this is the girl I was telling you about. Yep. So, you know, the more people who talk about you and they talk about the site, the more it gets bigger and it it spreads. And they're only coming if they're interested now. And that's what I like. Like, I lose people all the time too, but yeah. I gain people and I'll have people go, oh my God, I just found this. This is a happy little place of the internet that I wanted to find. And I'm like, perfect. That's what I want to be. I want to yeah. be a happy, I, I, I don't post negative reviews, which is yeah. different than some uh, counterparts of mine. Um, I'm, I'm here for what I think you could read or should read or what I enjoyed. I'm not here to tell you what I didn't enjoy. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. there's so many easy top five books that I hated, you know, and those just get such easy clickbait and they're so lazy. And I, you're not going to find that with me. You're just, I decided that a while ago. You're not going to, that's not, I'm not going to put that energy out there. These authors have spent a lot of time and a lot, and have put a lot of heart and a lot of effort into these books just because I didn't like it. I don't want to affect someone else who that might be their favorite book of last year. So yeah. go to Goodreads, go wherever you want to look at reviews. I, I'm not going to promote it with this. I, I, I'm not going to promote it. I'm going to talk about things that I like. Yeah. And that was a shift that I made when I started to get more followers is, ooh, it doesn't feel good to put that out there because maybe I just read too many romances in a row and I could see what was going to happen. I mean, somebody who reads one book a month or a year didn't see that coming and they thought it was yeah. beautiful and they loved it. So why am I going to take that away from them? Because I didn't like it. So I've been careful with that and I'm happy and I feel good about that. Yeah, And that makes me a little different than everybody else because some people are like, well, I don't care. I'm going to, if I didn't like it, you're going to know. And I'm a review site and I want you to know that I didn't like it. And I'm like, I, I don't, I'm just going to put out there what I did like. You know, it's funny as well. You're talking about that. I'm seeing like, and that's why it is a safe space that you've curated because people are not being kind of fed, you know, they're, they're, the catalyst inside of them that ticks is yeah. not negativity, Yeah. right? So like when you just said the word clickbait, you're clickbaiting people who 
thrive on the negative. Yeah. And so you're kind of like kind of keeping those people away, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. you're, you're, you know what I mean? So you're yeah. literally curating your fan base as to people that are thriving on the positive. Yeah. And I think that, you know, cause like to me where I'm at in my life right now, I don't want to hear complaining. I don't want to hear negativity. It just, it's, it's, it messes up my whole like frequency and it messes. I, it's just, it's just slime. Right. Yeah. And so like, I don't want to go there and watch people argue about books. I want to go there and just see like, what's the good one. And you've got some amazing content of like your top five summer reads, your top Mm -hmm. five winter reads, your top spring break. (laughs) Yeah. Like spring break. And I think that, yeah. And people want that. Like there's Mm -hmm. so many books right now. There's Mm -hmm. so much um, to comb through. And that's the other thing that I'm seeing in my head too, is once someone resonates with you and I don't know, if you guys out there listening, I, you know, my husband and I always say there's this one TV show that in it's um, sunny in Philadelphia and sunny in Philadelphia, either you like it yeah. or you don't like it. And that will let me know if you like it, like, should I listen to anything else that you watch <laughs> and that you're that person, right? You're yeah. campy. Yeah. You like kind of like that whole vibe. And so Sunny in Philadelphia is my husband and I, that's what we say. We're like, do you like Sunny in Philadelphia? Yes. No. Okay. What movies do you like? Or no, we're good. And so um, when someone resonates with you and what you read, the beauty of that is then it's kind of like, there's a real good chance I'm going to like the other stuff that she's reading too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, absolutely. And then I'm going to like her cups and I'm going to like her throws. Like, that's what people don't get is when you do so many people like myself, even were afraid of niching down for myself. It's because I think I'm really ADD and I can't niche down if I tried, but <laughs> niching down really is helpful Yeah, because you find your people, you find yeah. your frequency in the world and then you guys can all get together and talk books and comfy and chairs and chais. Chais, chais, man. Chai's. Do you make your own chai? I have to. We need like. No, I I go to Starbucks. I go to Starbucks. I have my favorite barista, Max. Mm -mm. And um, I love my chai. I just love it. And I'm not going to not get it. I love it. I think we're giving up stuff for Lent. I'm like, I would never. You're like, there's you. No, like not happening. Mm -mm. I'm not doing it. Why would I deprive myself of something that I enjoy this much? (laughs) So is it a cold chai or a hot chai? Where are you cold at? Chai, like, even if it's two degrees. It's cold cold chai. chai, no matter. Light ice or regular ice? I get extra ice <gasps> because I don't like to get all the milk. Really, if they could just pump the chai into my vein, I would be fabulous. So I get extra ice so that it's dark. My friend Laura always makes fun of it when she sees it. She'll be like, oh, that's a light one or that's too dark. Or, and I'm like, I know. I can tell by the way it looks. I'm sorry about her back there. She's, you know, crazy. She and makes a lot of cameos in my videos as well. I love it. So, I yeah. love it. Yeah. So like, okay, so we were talking mm-hmm. prior. So let me get out my handy dandy notebook because I had some questions. Okay. Um, and of course it disappeared. So let's see here. What... Okay, so now you oh, hold on a second. You are famous. You're Instagram famous, which by the way, you start wondering like is that person looking at me over there because they know me or because yeah. I my hair is wacko. So you'll yeah. like trust me, like this is a whole thing. Yeah. Um my claim well, to after fame, the magazine came out, I feel like people looked at me like in town were like I think I know you. The, was she just on the cup? Is that her? Is that her? Yeah. Well, it's an hour and a half of hair and makeup and someone professionally styled me. So, and you know, what I normally look like isn't. (laughs) Oh, I know. Right. Like I walk around on a Monday for you. That's why I love you. But that is not normally what I do. So I'm sure they're like, I don't know if that's her. (laughs) Well, trust me. I went to bed with my hair wet last night because I just wanted to take a hot shower. And the only thing that is done on me is lipstick and my bangs. Like that is the beauty of podcasting. And like this is the back of my hair probably looks like a chicken. Do you follow Um, that girl who does all the um, none of my business lists? 
Mm -hmm. one of her things is she writes lists and they're in the background. I can't think of her name, but she, one of the things is always the back of my hair. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. I don't know what's happening back here. I can feel it. It's my business. I don't have, and it's none of my business what's going on back there. Especially (laughs) being just like on camera. Like I look, everyone's like, you always look so put together. I'm like here, right here. (laughs) I'm right, right. I'm wearing sweatpants and slippers down here. (laughs) This is here. Okay. Podcast. Um, (laughs) So let's see here. So now that you're, you know, as my kids say, Instagram, I'm TikTok famous. That's how they see me. But yeah. now that you're Instagram famous for a while now, what do your kids and your husband think about this? Because like, it's, it is weird to have a mom that's famous, like on social um, media, because that's their thing, right? That's not a yeah. our thing. That's a their thing. And you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, I get a lot of, you're not going to post this on Book and a Chai, are you? <laughs> Yes. And I said, I would never, I would never, I, I always will ask your permission. I will always like, I would never, but, um, my daughter had a bunch of friends over this weekend and they gave her the cutest thing for her birthday. And it was this whole saying, it had all this candy, like happy birthday, Jane, we love you too. And then it'd be like a thing of Reese's pieces. And, and I was like, this is so cute. And they're like, Ooh, they all go, Ooh, it's going on book of a chai. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because it's like a board with candy. Like, I'm not taking yeah. pictures of you guys. But so right. sometimes they're a little like, well, I don't want it to go on there. And then other times they just think it's funny. Like, mm-hmm. she, th- I mean, my 14-year-old absolutely thinks I'm very cringy most of the time. Yeah, so, right. But, you know, I, I made fun of my parents when I was that age. Like, you're just, now I'm giving her more, uh, more to work with. <laughs> right. <laughs> More ammunition. Yeah, you more know, ammunition. That I, you know, I think too is that I, I, I feel like we're showing everyone. Like I just had a conversation with Irene Wood mm-hmm. um, about. I think that you are here to show other women and men and our kids that there, there's no like final acts. Yeah, you know that we're just getting started. Yeah. Um, when we have the safety and time, our kids are a little bit more raised, you yeah. know, like a little more independent, a yep. little bit more independent. We're not, you know, sitting there waiting for to bottle feed or crying yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They're off at school. We have time to like worry about ourselves, you know, and really spend more time on us again. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important. Like I've always been a stay at home mom mm-hmm. and now I do all of this. And I think it's really positive that it's showing my sons what they can do or their partners can do. It's showing Mm -hmm. my daughters what's possible. And that just because you have a few wrinkles and maybe the number four or the number five in front of your age (laughs) doesn't mean that you're supposed to become a, you know, whatever and, and go off in the sunset. Like, yeah, no offense, but I have been either pregnant or an actual mom since I was 22 years old. Yeah. That's 30 years almost of like yeah. not having Meredith yeah. and, and and worrying about somebody else or driving or whatever the hell it's been. Yeah. And so I think it's so important to say like, look, if you didn't do it, then you could do it now and you could do something different yeah. from this or just from you. You recently started a job at Sourcebooks, which is a very prestigious publisher. Yes. Is this tied together? Where, where did this come from? So this came uh, very organically from me not being quite fulfilled in the role that I was doing previously. I was either a paralegal or I worked in, um, real estate development. Um, and while it was a good job and while I enjoyed a lot of things about it, it wasn't filling creative needs. So Mm -hmm. Because of that, I did start booking a chai as a as a way to do that, as a way to talk about things that I enjoyed more for fun than anything. I mean, yeah. honestly, just more for fun. Like I posted a thread recently of me and my friend Tracy and Jill coming up with the name mm. because I was like, OK, I want it to be things that I love. And we were coming up with all these silly names and it was so fun to go back and look at how it began. Yeah. I read all Um, that. That was really cute. That was, was that on your, was that um, part of your main page or was that a story? I don't remember. It was main page. I put it on the main page because I'm like, this is good. I got to keep this up there. 
Yeah. Um, just a text thread of like us coming up with silly names and and just being silly and having a good time because you and know, Irene and I were just Irene yeah. and I was just talking about that. Like the fields basically came from like a, an evening with girlfriends over some wine and like on a napkin. The fields of Michigan was born, right? And so uh, it's yeah. like amazing. That's how shit happens, though. Yeah. Like you're kind of not fulfilled. You kind of yeah. want to get, you know, like do yeah. something fun. And then you're kind of bullshitting with your girlfriends and you're yeah. throwing it around and spitballing. Like, yeah. do not underestimate the power of your girlfriends and spitballing and having fun and throwing things out there. It doesn't yeah. have to be. I actually just had a conversation with a woman about this, that every time she talks to her spouse, about her dreams mm -hmm. that he gets overwhelmed because he thinks that she's putting demands out into the planet and yep. he feels like stressed. Yeah. And I said, I forget what show I was watching, but they said bullshit. And as long as you say bullshit, Oh, mm -hmm. it was um, suits. As okay. long as you say bullshit, anything you say after that is basically your dreams. Right. Yeah. And so like, I think girlfriends, because you're not putting pressure on them, like a spouse, yeah. like yeah. I want an Oompa Loompa. So yeah. like, you can just kind of really spitball with girlfriends yeah. of ideas without pressuring them. And it's just fun. Yeah. Like that's a great place to go. So sorry yes. to interrupt, but I just no. wanted to. And, and that's how it started, but it was 400 and something followers at the time. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to, it was, what I was doing was dream casting books, which was a mm -hmm. fun, but it was very niche. Like how many people are going to go follow a dream cast only site? I don't even know what that means. I mean, 400 but... people did. So, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this more like a book thing, like just mm -hmm. overall book thing and started there ended leaving my job and I had a few months at home and discussed that with, you know, my husband, everybody was on board, <clears throat> was home, was playing tennis, was with my kids over the summer. It was fabulous to have that time because I hadn't in a very long time. I'd been working um, full time for a long time. So I took some time. And when I took that time, that's when the thoughts started to come of what if I did something with books? What if I did something where I really enjoy my job? What if I start to look at that? How would that look? What could that look like? And I had time to do that. And I think that's important. A lot of us don't have the time or make the time to look at these avenues. And all of a sudden, oh, Source Books, the number six publisher is in Naperville? How is that possible? How did I not, how did I not know this? Right. And I started to look at job postings and started to talk to them and found a really good position for me, interviewed and got the job. And I'm still pretty new in it, but mm -hmm. I love it. And it was a complete 180 job shift, life shift. <clears throat> and I, I really, really am happy I did it. So it's still very new, mm -hmm. um, but... I also was hoping this, like you were saying earlier about, I want to be able to say, okay, I'm 45 and I just switched my career and yeah. that's okay. And I'm going to land on my feet and I hope I even soar more than before. You know, I hope I'm able to do even more. And just because, and my best friend was the one who said this to me, she was like, we still have a long time to work. Like this isn't, you know, we're not about to retire. So if you want to switch jobs, Let's go. Let's right. do this. Start um, now. Yeah, why now. Why wait? You know? And I, I had a lot of support like that. And from my husband as well, a lot of support like that of just, okay, why don't you try this out and see if that's something that works for you and that works for us as a family. And so far it has, and it's awesome. So I'm able to still do book and a chai, but I'm also able to work full time, which I, I like working. I, I, I enjoy it. So, mm -hmm. and I really like this job. So, well, this is like what they talk about, like follow your passion and the money will come. Mm -hmm. Like, even if the money doesn't necessarily come from book and chai, mm -hmm. it's going to come from the next thing. This is yeah. like when I talk about stop doing shit that you hate Yeah, because the more that you do shit that you hate, the more shit that you hate will show up. And the more <laughs> you do stuff that you love, the more stuff that you love will show up. Like, yeah you get in line with your frequency and what it is that you want to bring more to your life yeah. and more will come. And so it's yeah. like, 
you stood and got out of the thing you didn't want to do. You started doing the thing you wanted to do, spending time with your kids, reading, mm -hmm. being at home, thinking yep. about you and what you want. And yep. granted, this is coming from a privileged space where you yes. could quit your job, right? We yes. all like are very aware of that. Yes. I'm very But at the same time, like I've started telling, so I don't have a bathtub. And it's like my number one thing. I love taking a bath. I love I, taking baths. I love taking a bath. I am a bathtub girl. Yeah. I am a nighttime, cold outside bathtub girl. End of yes. the day, cold to your bones, go get in a hot bath. Even if it's for 20 minutes just to warm up. That yes. is who I am as a person deep down. Well, we have one of those extra large showers that me and 32 mm -hmm. people could be in for absolutely <laughs> no reason. Right. Yeah. And so I've started to say to everyone... <laughs> I'm going home to take a bath. Mm. And my family looks at me and they're like, well, we don't have a bath though. Yeah, I can do that. But my yeah. kids have one, right? And yeah. I, there's no way in hell I would go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Even after it was clean, there's not, yeah. it's not happening. Even that day it gets Even clean. Even that no? day okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm still not going to do it. <laughs> but I started to say, but this is manifestation, right? Like yeah. this is manifestation. So you raise your frequency by stop doing the thing that you don't want to do anymore to start kind of like figuring out what it is that you actually want to do and thinking about how you want to spend your time. And then you start spending your time that way. And then, and then, yeah. and then, and then this is manifestation. Yeah. In the, in the sense that people think that like, if you are like, well, I want to manifest a car, a car doesn't drive up in your driveway park and the person leaves keys in it. Yeah. Manifestation happens like, oh, and there's a publisher in Naperville. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to apply for jobs. Yeah. That's what it looks like. That's yeah. how it actually plays out is that you have to be an active participant yes. in manifestation. Right. But being inside of the place of saying yes and being inside of the place of following your dreams and having an open heart and doing things that you like, mm -hmm. these ideas come into your head mm -hmm. when you are inside of that frequency. And then you think this and then you send that email and then your friend brings up this and then all of a sudden you're doing actually what you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And it's they're all stepping stones and you yeah. just pay attention and you say yes to the step stepping stone instead of going Oh, that's stupid. No one's yeah. going to care. No one's yeah. going to like, no, you just keep going with it. And if it feels yeah. good, you keep going with it. And so I yeah. love the fact that you like heeded that call. And it's the thing I love about our conversation is that all of this has happened so fast mm -hmm. that you, your story is such an amazing example of what this looks like in real time. <laughs> Like, yeah. right. I mean, like it was yeah. like, um, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know what people think. I'm not yeah. just gonna. And yeah. I sat across the couch from you and I'm like, no, screw that. Just do you yeah. like, just do you, do you, do you, do you. And people will follow. Do you just keep doing yeah. you. And yep. I hope that more people can see what's happening here. Because like you said, you went from real estate to books. You didn't go back to college for that. Like you're yeah. like, we're here because you're yeah. really good at it and it's just going to continue to grow. If someone wants to, and they're following you, you have a link tree on your Instagram page and that's mm -hmm. book and a chai. This will yeah. all be in the show notes. Yeah. And from there, they can find your like to know it. They can find your Amazon storefront that has mm -hmm. all the stuff that you all like. The stuff. Yep. All the everything top five romances, okay. you know, our top five of January, um, my top 15 of last year. That okay. was a big, you know, people love the list at the end of the year to see what yeah. to read next year. And I really spent a lot of time on that. So that was cool. Um, but also well, how do you get all this in? Like who the hell can read this many books? You know, I go through phases and I was just saying to a friend of mine yesterday, I've been in a not book phase this week where I'll, I usually read at night and mm -hmm. I don't watch tons and tons of TV. Um, if I have a good show going, I'm, I'm screwed, but like <laughs> most of the time I don't. So I will read at night and I usually probably read between one and two hours at night, but I would say the last week I've been doing like 20 minutes, not because of the book. It was a great book. I just wasn't in the space for it. Mm -hmm. But I go through phases like that where then 
something will get me and I'll finish three books in a weekend. Oh, wow. So it just, it, it, it depends. And I try to let myself follow that. I'm not going to force it. I definitely, a big phrase in the book world is the DNF, the do not finish. And I, I've gotten more and more comfortable with that. Like reading something for, I would say 50 to maybe a hundred, maybe 75 pages and going. No. Yeah. I'm out. Because I've pushed through too many of those and gotten to the end and been like, how did I say for that? You know? Right. So I'm like, no, I think I know between 50 and 75, whether or not this is going to be something I can get into. Um, but there's a lot of great books out there. And, and you're not afraid to listen. Like everyone, yeah. she also listens. She doesn't yeah. just read. Like you will yeah. listen in the car. Yep. You're going to ingest. Listen in the car, listen on a walk. Uh, a lot of my girlfriends listen when they're making dinner or when they're mm. folding laundry. And I know that's how a lot of people ingest podcasts too. And I think yeah. that's also really great. Um, like just pop those earbuds in. And now I get it when sometimes I want quiet. And I think there are a lot of people who want quiet. And sometimes yeah. when I'm doing laundry, that is my quiet. <laughs> yeah. But I also, if I've got a good book going, I know I'm going to be folding laundry for 20 minutes. Pop them in. Right. And that's like some chapter right there. Yeah. Before I let you go, okay. I said, I have to, we have to do a, like the Jennifer Steinhagen oh, yeah. number one you have to read this book if you do nothing else in life, if you never read another book, if you've never read a book since you graduated school. <laughs> what's that book? I got it. I got to know. The Wishing Game mm. by Meg Schaefer. It's a pen name. That's not her real name. But it is like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mystical, but meets present day. And okay. it is just a love letter to readers. Mm. It, and I have no other way to explain it. I loved it. I've read it like five times. I talked about it. It was my favorite book of 2023. Wow. Loved all it. right. Loved it, loved so it, loved it. So we're, we're all getting ready for spring break. Yeah. Go to Book in a Chai. Find out her tops because she's got yeah. the best top five lists of romance and, you know, all the things. You're going to mm -hmm. get all of your reading. Do her a solid and go buy them from yeah. her Amazon shopping page because she's sure. done all the heavy lifting so yeah. that you don't go buy the stupid books that are, you know, top top whatever New York Times bestsellers that are actual garbage. She's yep. actually doing the work for, for you. So yep. please go through her Amazon or LTK and buy them by way of her links. You can just literally go in there and click, 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 and you'll have them by this week for spring easy. break. Yep. Nice and easy. Like she's yep. done the work for us. So. And, and join yeah. the book club. I started oh, a book club. You started, I was, you know what? That's so funny. I was going to ask you if you I started, joined, uh, started an started online book club. book club and it has been a ton of fun and we've oh, been, pick, I've been picking or I've been letting the audience pick every once in a while too. But if I have something I'm really excited about, I'm going to pick. Yeah. Um, and we pick a book a month and then we set an online date and we just do a chat about it in Instagram. It's free. I mean, it's easy. And I set up some questions and we talk about it. And it's been a lot of fun. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me going, I want to join book clubs. I don't know of any in my town, which yeah. makes me sad. I wish there was a better way for people to find book clubs in their towns. Um, but I'm like, here, join the online one. I'm here. Yeah. I'm reading this. Let's talk about it. Let's I know what it's like it. to want to connect with people who are reading the same thing you're reading. Like you finish a good book and you're like, <sighs> Who else read this? <laughs> I must talk about it right now. So, so the online book club has been a new thing for me probably the last five months or so. And I mm -hmm. really, I think it's been good. I really like it. I love that. And you yeah. know what? You're creating community yes. for people that might not have, like you said, might not have community because they yeah. do like to be by themselves or they do like to be with their own frequency of people or doing yeah. what they love to do. They don't want to go out and you know, get yeah. shit faced or whatever yeah. it is and go to bars. They want to just connect with people that are doing what they're doing and talk about what they're doing because they're excited about what they're doing. And so like yes. you're giving people this great community yeah. to do that in a safe space. I love that you're keeping it positive. You know, that's yes. on brand for me. 
Yeah. I'm so, so excited and proud of you and just so happy that you're sharing like your entrepreneur stuff here with everybody and go follow Book and a Chai. And thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, lady. I appreciate it. All right. See you guys here next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you would like to connect on a more personal level, head over to MeredithWillets.com or on Instagram at Meredith with a Y. For behind the scene footage and outtakes, please subscribe and come back each week for more Meredith with a Y. Thanks again for listening. Cheers.